Hey guys, so I'm in high school now, and I'm probably the most stressed person in human existence. Well, let me tell you why. College. Not only do I have to make a decision that affects the next four years of my life, actually it kind of affects my whole life, but I have constant, constant reminders of my impending doom. The first reminder being that it's the only thing that adults care about when I talk to them. So yeah, that's why I like bow ties. Haha, <laughs> that's great. By the way, how old are you now? Oh, I'm 18. <gasps> you must be going to college soon. Which college are you going to? Have you made a decision? What are you going to major in? What are you going to Minor Why would you whoa, like whoa, to- Whoa, 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 What do you- Whoa! And the second reminder being that about a million colleges now have my phone number and email somehow. You see, this- This is a week's worth of messages only in the mail from colleges! But here's the thing. I've looked into the pros and cons of college and I've decided that I don't need college at all. But... Let me explain. First off, what do we want out of college? I'd say that since this is a huge decision, we should probably get the best education for the best price possible. Make sense? Good! Because today we're gonna look at three things that show that college is anything but that. Number one, success. If I'm gonna go to college, I wanna finish college. And I wanna know that I have good chances. I wanna know that in general, people who are in my situation come out on top. Too bad that's not the case. The Wall Street Journal reported on October 13th, 2014 that nearly one third of students who started college in 2012 didn't return to a U.S. school the following year. And according to the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development in its report entitled Education at a Glance, 2010, only 46% of students actually completed their full education at college. So you've got multiple studies showing that each year a huge chunk of students that start college don't actually finish. I mean, it's not like I'm surprised or anything. You should go to this institution and study for four years. Um, that's a long time. What if something comes up? Gee, wow. Well, to be honest, I never thought about that. It might be because you run out of money, you get married, you find another job outside of college, you have to go home and take care of a dying family member, whatever. Regardless of reason, a rough 30 to 50% of college College students are having to go and pay money into the system, yet having to leave after paying all that money. And unfortunately, the time they spent there means next to nothing. According to an article by the Wall Street Journal, if you go to college and gain the experience, but you don't actually get the degree, the experience means next to nothing and will not put you higher than regular high school graduates in terms of getting a job. Just in case you think I'm lying about this, all the articles are in the description for you to view after this video. So I could go to college for 3.8 years and then leave two weeks before receiving my degree, and businesses would be like, a you went to college, but you didn't actually get the degree, so there's the door, bye! But even if you get the degree, you run into problem number two cost. So you stay, you work hard for four long years, and then you finally get a piece of paper, the degree. Question is, how much did it cost to get that? Well, collegedata.com says that for a four-year public college in your home state, it will cost about $9,139 a year for tuition. Huh, well that's not actually that bad. I know, right? Wait. Tuition isn't the only thing you have to pay for! Tricky colleges! You've still got to pay for housing, meals, textbooks, school supplies, personal expenses, and transportation costs! CollegeData.com has those too. And if you add them all up like I did, a four-year public college in your home state will come to a grand total of $93,324. It's too bad I won't ever get an honest email from a college. We want you at IU. Come and spend about a hundred grand on your education! It's not so bad if you become a doctor or a lawyer where you make enough money to pay that off. But if you have dreams and you want to be a writer or a video producer and you don't make that much, you're going to have a lot of debt to pay off. Don't believe me? The Institute for College Access and Success reported that 7 in 10 seniors who graduated from nonprofit colleges in 2013 had student loan debt with an average of $28,400 per borrower. Let me put that in perspective. According to the US Census Bureau, the median household income in the United States is $53,046. That means the debt you have to pay off is equivalent to about two-fifths of what you'll make in a year. Which would be great! If we didn't have to spend that income on, I don't know, living? So what do we know? We know that you have around a 50% chance of having to leave college, because reasons. And then if you don't leave college, you'll likely accumulate tens of thousands of dollars in debt. But let's forget about all that. Say we live in a magical land where your debt will be paid off by a fairy godmother or something. What did you actually get out of this experience? Third problem with college? 
the result. The answer is a degree. You got a degree. But the point of getting that degree was so that you could get a job. Or at least I hope it was. But the fact is that a degree doesn't actually guarantee you a job. And businesses are relying less and less on degrees and more on actual skills. Just look at Ernst & Young, one of the UK's biggest graduate recruiters and the fifth largest recruiter in the UK. The Huffington Post reported that Ernst & Young has announced it will be removing the degree classification from its entry criteria, saying there is no evidence success at university correlates with achievement in later life. There's also the story of Nina Maflay, who created a website with her resume. But not only that, she wanted to work for a travel agency, so on that website, she actually did some legwork and found out some things that that agency wasn't doing right and provided solutions to that agency's problems. The website went viral and she started getting requests for job interviews from businesses like Uber and Dropbox. They were that impressed. And they didn't call her saying, yeah, do you have a degree? If that's the case, we'll consider you for an interview. But if you didn't have a degree, this whole viral website thing, that wouldn't matter. In truth, a lot of businesses, specifically in the arts department, could care less what you studied because a job is more about doing specific tasks and less about knowing specific facts. So that's my conclusion. I don't need college. The fact that I want to be a video producer and communicate new and awesome ideas to people through video and the fact that I'm doing that right now means that I don't need college for it. There's an alternative. The first one being the fact that we live in an age where you can access pretty much any information if you have library card or internet access. Not only that, but multiple programs exist that allow students to work at the job they want to go into without actually having to be in college. These students are taken on as apprentices and taught everything they need to know about their job because, well, they're in it. Two of these programs are called Praxis and Apprentice University. Next fall, I will be applying to Praxis. It lasts one year long, and during this year, you work about 30 hours at your job, learning everything there is to know about your occupation, and 10 hours a week, you do an educational program online. It lasts one year long, and during this year, you spend 30 hours a week working at the job you're placed at. And leadership at Praxis is checking in, making sure that you're getting the most you can out of this experience. But it isn't just work. Two hours a day, you're doing an online course that teaches you a lot lot of stuff. The skills taught in this online course range from technological skills, economics, history, philosophy, business, and much, much more. Essentially, after one single year, you've learned all the skills you need to go into the field you're going into. And you have the equivalent, if not better, than a liberal arts degree through the online education. And the best part? a lot less debt. One year practice costs around eleven to twelve thousand dollars which is about three thousand more than college does but the fact is that it's only one year so you get to go into the workforce and make that money back like three years before college students do. And not only that but it's only one year so you're only paying twelve thousand as opposed to nine thousand times four. At your job you're paid ten dollars an hour so if you saved all that up and then paid it back at the end of the year it would come close if not completely pay for your tuition. Unlike college which doesn't pay you a dime. While college is the normal go-to after high school, it doesn't have to be. In the end, nothing can guarantee you a job, but it makes sense that experience would get you farther than a piece of paper. So next time an adult asks me where I'm going to college, I'm going to say, I'm not, and then watch their troubled expression and then eventually show them this video after I've enjoyed that expression for a good amount of time. So one final message. Students, I hope that you see this as an opportunity to explore a better way of learning. Adults, I hope that you use this to educate students on the alternatives to college before thinking that college is the only way to go. And as for the colleges watching this video, stop emailing me.